It's the most boring, horrifying experience. Someone invented marriage and now you're a dick if you don't marry her and I'm a dick if I don't show up. Given that bourgeois feminism, aka capitalist feminism, is more pro bona than a strip club, which are at least governed by petty bourgeois values that declare that as queer as you might want to be, a person still must pay for a boner. Liberal feminism, alternatively, knows that boners are a human rights issue, and liberal feminism, like Hillary Clinton, does not fuck around. So, a little while ago, I somehow became aware through the feeds, uh of the movie Eyes Wide Shut, which I vaguely remember being released, but um, hadn't really thought about since it came out. And all the things I was finding on the internet were kind of conspiracy theory-esque things that were fairly Nazi-influenced, that were talking about the conspiracy... Uh, were talking about, yeah, Eyes Wide Shut from a conspiratorial kind of perspective. For those that don't know the movie at all, Eyes Wide Shut is about... It's kind of difficult to describe what it's about, but it's essentially about a couple who are the most kind of stereotypically... It's like a Barbie and a Ken doll that know each other. And, and it's about their kind of relationship and their relationship to money and power and, and all sorts of things. But if you just, like, don't really, like understand the movie at all and are only focused on the most sensational elements of it then it's largely a movie about a illuminati um orgy but the way it's presented in the movie you're not sure whether it's a dream or not and so a lot of the conspiracy theorists would talk about it and be like um oh and also like stanley kubrick died like two days after handing this movie in and on the one hand that can be suspicious from a conspiracy theory angle because it's like well he handed the movie in it was obviously too controversial so the, i don't know for whatever reason it made the most sense to kill him immediately like i yeah anyway so that's one um take another take is that um there's a thing of people staying alive for as long as they have a purpose to and it could very well have been the case that he had decided this is going to be my last movie. And um, yeah, so died not long after handing it in. What's interesting about this is that they also usually say in the conspiracy theories that he was killed so that they could edit the movie and they cut out and they'll make up however long um, was cut out of the movie because it's made up. And they'll say something to the effect of... Um, that there, was a, that there was a human sacrifice uh, at the orgy. And because they're idiots, <laughs> they think that, like, including a human sacrifice scene in this movie would have um, somehow completely destabilized the Illuminati. Um, but removing that scene alone um, didn't. But... What they also fail to see is that the point of the movie is that he's kind of scaring you with the image of an Illuminati um, orgy. But the point of the movie is that things just as horrible as that are happening all around this guy constantly and he can't see them because they look normal, whereas he's freaking out about them when they're dressed up in fancy costumes. Yeah, so it kind of really got me thinking about... Like, the movie's basically talking about how the difference between a wife and a prostitute is um, uh, a difference of degree, not kind. Yeah, which is a pretty, like, fucking radical feminist, <laughs> almost, analysis, um, in you know, interpreted in that way. And it talks about the kind of pedophilic nature of capitalism and, um, yeah, all sorts of things. So... Very interesting movie. As a result, I've been thinking about those types of concepts, and I've written uh, maybe 1,500 words or something on it. Um, so I just wanted to read that, and I uh, hope you enjoy. If we are being technical, and when isn't bourgeois society being technical, 
shouldn't sex work be called masturbation work? After all, the worker didn't necessarily arrive at work with the intention of being sexually satisfied any more than a bus driver is at work to enjoy a nice drive. The customers aren't helping the driver to fulfill her desire to be stuck in traffic, but instead to be paid. This is still the case even if she has a positive response to her work. Also, technology now means that the worker might not even be in the same time and space as the orgasms they are helping to manufacture. Furthermore, in both cases, whether the tool is a bus or a boner, the worker came to get paid, not to be who they are. But in both cases, the employer wants the worker to think they are working because this is their passion. They are a sandwich artist or a boner poet, and the business is their family. This is how a pimp talks to a customer. Uh, this is how a pimp talks to a hooker. So it seems like with so-called sex work, the trick or the john is the only person that is actually having sex for themselves. Everyone else exists in the dreams of their customers. In a similar sense that, under patriarchy, it is only men who can really be having sex for themselves. Not because women don't have equal or greater sexual desire, but because men are the only people who are recognised as fully human. And to be able to do something for oneself in this sense is dependent on social recognition. I mean, even literal slaves do everything for themselves to the extent that they don't choose to do another thing. But this is completely different from being socially recognised and valued in that aspiration. At least in terms of ideals, having sex for yourself used to be the only type of sex that wasn't rape. I even remember people teaching this idea in a classroom. But neoliberalism has created Fifty Shades of Economic Exploitation, where the line between rape and sex has basically been dissolved, along with the line between employment and prostitution. However, in recognising the work-like qualities of prostitution, which are very important, we should never forget to centre its rape-like qualities as well. To me, the term masturbation worker captures both elements well, and in a more realistic way, than something more explicit like rape worker. This is because if a prostituted person is a rape worker, then what is a wife? Consent? Well, actually, only very recently was that legally the case. Most people reading this either know someone, or were someone, at some point in their life who lived with a man who could legally rape them, even in enlightened capitalist societies such as Australia even while The Simpsons was on TV. This is what's so sick about weddings, and the idea that they are for women. That's absolute pimp talk. On the one hand, she gets a big dress, a party, and a ring, you know, things girls like for some apparent reason that we promise had nothing to do with class society. Oh, and on the other hand, did I mention he can now rape her whenever he wants. So, if we are still going to use the term wife to describe whatever crazy economic arrangement that shit is, then I think using something like rape worker would be too extreme to refer to prostitution, given that it is basically just a wife-by-the-hour arrangement. <laughs> now the church is all upset about the gay marriage. Why? It's one of those trick arguments. Where everyone's, it's a big issue that doesn't really fucking matter, but at the same time, the, the, the arguments don't matter. Oh, the gay should not get married. It's going to ruin families. What is, well, we have every right. Marriage should not be a legal institution. That's the argument you should be having that no one will... The government should have no place in your love life. That should not... If you want to get married, it should be like joining a fraternity where you... You know, you want to get married, you go to your church, or your Chuck E. Cheese, and they do a crazy rain dance around you, and some incantation, and puff um, if you're a married person. It doesn't mean anything. If it, well, what about tax breaks? Well, fuck it. If you want tax breaks, incorporate, right? The government should only look at you as an individual no matter what, right? What if you're a fucking idiot and you're ugly? It's like the carpool lane. You can't find someone to marry. It's discrimination, right? <laughs> 
should not be a legal institution. It shouldn't exist. If marriage didn't exist, would you invent it? Would you go, baby, this shit we got together, it's so good, we gotta get the government in on this shit. We can't just share this commitment between us. We need judges and lawyers involved in this shit, baby. It's hot. <laughs> but someone invented it. And now you gotta do it or you're an asshole, right? It's like Secretary's Day. Every day was fine when you shuffled into the office till someone said, oh, it's Secretary's Day. And you're, now you're a dick if you don't bring her flowers. Someone invented marriage and now you're a dick if you don't marry her and I'm a dick if I don't show up. And it's a boring, egomaniacal ritual that no one wants to go to. Don't ever for a second think that someone wants to be at your wedding. It's the most boring, horrifying experience. It's like watching someone make out on a bus for six hours. You're gonna wear your nicest clothes and show up, bring presents, and tell witty anecdotes. And I, I watch you, my friend up there, going, you know, I'm gonna tell you what love and commitment mean to me. Because the first time I saw Laura Ann, my heart swelled up like a fire. If I'm gonna be that privy to your most intimate details, I'd rather just watch you fuck. That's a, that's a wedding. Yeah, let's just, let me watch you fuck with a miner's cap and get in there and see all the fucking boils and fucking heat bumps and yeah, that. It's gross. An uber wife, if you will. So in that sense, masturbation worker sounds much closer to what people want to buy when they say they are buying sex. Like with all class arrangements, employment contracts have become much more flexible in the last 2000 years. The arrangement is still the same though. What this means practically is that your boss slash husband, to the extent that there's a difference, doesn't have to buy you a house anymore, but nonetheless, he can still put his dick in you. Of course, this isn't a dictatorship, and you are more than welcome to be homeless whenever you want. As a capitalist pimp husband, it would actually benefit me to replace you with a more committed worker ho wife. So by all means, go on strike by yourself for as long as you like. Just like a capitalist, the husband has a never-ending strike fund called his dick. He doesn't have to like the arrangement, but the bank will still accept it as collateral. So I believe that Masturbation Worker captures the Dickensian nature of wanking others for money without necessarily playing into the timeless sexual prudery that often surrounds grown adults discussing sex in patriarchy. It's funny across all these different times and cultures because the hidden truth is eyes wide shut. Haha, <laughs> boobs. On the other hand, perhaps unsurprisingly, the term sex work sounds a bit sexy and everyone knows the word sex itself sells. So calling it masturbation work would definitely be bad for both business and boners, again, to the extent that there's a difference. Given that bourgeois feminism, aka capitalist feminism, is more pro-boner than a strip club, which are at least governed by petty bourgeois values that declare that as queer as you might want to be, a person still must pay for a boner. Liberal feminism, alternatively, knows that boners are a human rights issue, and liberal feminism, like Hillary Clinton, does not fuck around. They are ready and willing to set themselves on fire, i.e. help bury the bodies, to secure the boner slash money slash White House, as good wives in The Sopranos and throughout history have always done. You can't just give that job to some random one-legged Russian as much as you might want to. To a patriarch, wives and prostitutes are complementary. All patriarchies do this, but think Sopranos the mobsters, their wives and their girlfriends, and the stark reality that even the most God-fearing man has been forced to admit, which is that one woman can't do all of that wanking. Frankly, that's just unrealistic. Instead, a man should have a broad menu of women to do most of the heavy wanking, and one hoe that thinks he loves her. Maybe he really does, but this doesn't change the economics, meaning that it won't protect her. In pimping, as Iceberg Slim taught us, this is known as your bottom bitch. 
she is used to keep the other workers in line. A bottom bitch will set herself on fire to keep you hard. This is important, because if you just ask some random hooker to do the same thing, like any normal person, they would either laugh at you or ask for way too much money. So, whether they are wives or top bitches, the idea is that it's easier to hand raise a pet psycho than to try to hire one last minute when you are already in a pickle. Hello! Steven, my boy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, my ass. Who this nigga up on that nag? Oh, Steven, you have nails for breakfast. What's the matter? Why you so honored? You miss me, huh? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I miss you like a like a hog miss fly, like a like a, a baby miss mammy titty. <laughs> I miss you like I misses a rock in my shoe. <laughs> now, I ask you, who this nigga on that nag? A snowball. You wanna know my name or the name of my horse? You ask me. That's who the hell you calling Snowball, horse boy? I'll snatch your black ass off that nag down here in the mud so fast, make no head. Steven, 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 Steven. Let's keep it funny. Django here's a freeman. This nigga here? That nigga there. Let me at least introduce the two of you. Django, this is another cheeky black bugger like yourself, Steven. Steven, this here's Django. You two ought to hate each other. Calvin, just who the hell is this nigga you feels the need to entertain? Django and his friend in gray here, Dr. Schultz, are customers. And they are our guests, Stephen. And you, you old decrepit bastard, ought to show them every hospitality. You understand that? Yes, sir. Him, I understand, but I don't know why I got to take lip well, off this you nigga. You don't have to know why. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I, I understand. Well, good. Let's spin a knot. Go up in the guest bedroom to get too ready. Gonna stay in the big house? Steven, he's a slaver. It's different. In the big house? Well, you got a problem with that? Oh, no, no, I ain't got no problem with it. If you ain't got no problem with burning the bed, the sheets, the pillowcases, everything else when this black ass motherfucker's Now, that gone. is my problem. They are mine to burn. Now, your problem right now is making a good impression. And I want you to start solving that problem right now and get them goddamn rooms ready. Yes, sir, Monsieur Candy. Go on now. I can't believe you brought a nigga to stay in the big house. Your daddy rolling over in this goddamn grave right now. Yeah. Whew, nigga in the it's getting house. worse and worse. Shit is that? Now, where is my beautiful sister? There she is! Woo! Dr. Schultz, this attractive Southern Belle is my widowed sister. Darling, you are a tonic for tired eyes. Mm. So, a patriarchy needs both wives and hoes. Despite that, the same way workers don't need capitalism, wives and hoes don't need men. So it's best for men to pit them against each other. That's nice. I can put Sabrina in here. Yeah. It's really pretty. It's old fashioned. <laughs> He's pig. I hope Santa Claus gets me one of these for Christmas. You do? Yeah. Well, you're gonna have to wait and see. <laughs>
grateful that we've managed to survive through all of our adventures. Whether they were real or only a dream. Are you? Are you? Am I sure? <sighs> um. Oh. Only. Only as sure as I am that the reality of one night, let alone that of a whole lifetime. can ever be the whole truth. And no dream is ever just a dream. Mm. The important thing is we're awake now. that word, you know, it frightens me. <laughs> but I do love you. And you know, there is something very important that we need to do as soon as possible. What's that? Fuck. It's the most boring, horrifying experience. Someone invented marriage and now you're a dick if you don't marry her and I'm a dick if I don't show up. And it's a boring, egomaniacal ritual that no one wants to go to. Don't ever for a second think that someone wants Fuck to you. be at your wedding. It's gonna cost you three dollars. You know what, Tony? It's done is done. We are where we are, and it's for the best. But just for the record, or it might even interest you to know that I might actually have gone on with your cheating and your bullshit. If your attitude around here had been even the least bit loving, cooperative, interested, Whose idea was white caps? Just a bigger version of an emerald ring, so you can keep on with your other life. You don't know me at all. I know you better than anybody, Tony, even your friends, which is probably why you hate me. Hate you? Oh, don't worry. I'm going to hell when I die. Nice thing to say to a person heading into an MRI. You know, Tony, I have always been sorry I said that. You were my guy. You could be so sweet. Nobody could make me laugh like you. Carmel, who the fuck did you think I was when you married me, huh? You knew my father. You grew up around Dickie Moltisanti and your Uncle Eddie. Where, where do you get off acting all surprised and miffed when there were women on the side? You knew the deal. Deal? 
And your mother can talk all she wants about what's his name in his fucking chain of drugstores. You and I both know that the other boyfriend you were debating marrying was Jerry Toofy with his father's snowplow business. And we now know that that wouldn't have suited you at all. You really don't hear me, do you? You think for me it's all about things. No, no, I forced all this shit on you. What you really crave is a little Hyundai and a simple gold heart on a chain. You were so fucking hateful. Can I tell you something, Tony? Don't pretend like I got a choice. The last year, I have been dreaming and fantasizing and in love with Furio. <laughs> Every morning when he'd come to pick you up, I would look forward to it all night long in bed next to you. Those nights when you were actually in the bed. And he would ring the doorbell. I felt like my heart would come out of my chest. He would smile and we'd talk. And then you would come down the stairs. And I felt probably like someone who was terminally ill and somehow they managed to forget it for a minute. You knew the deal deal and then it all comes back he talked to you all poor you he made me feel like i mattered you know you asked me the other day what i read his cousin has that you don't have and i thought about it because it's a pretty good fucking question and yeah she's sexy enough even with the one pin gone but that's not it i could converse with her because she had something to say i am here Besides, bring the fucking chairs down and did you sign the living trust? She's a grown fucking woman who's been kicked around and she's been on her own and she's had to fight and struggle. Unlike me, is that it? Who the fuck wanted it like this? Who the fuck pissed and moaned at just the idea of me with a fucking real estate license? Free to sit back for 20 fucking years and fiddle with the air conditioning and fucking bitch and complain and fucking bitch. Bitch, bitch, to me, to your priest. Io adoro la collezione. Fuck it. Who knew all this time you wanted Tracy and Hepburn? Well, Tony, what about the thousand other fucking pigs you had your dick in over the years? The strippers, the cocktail waitresses. Were you best friends with all of them, too? You fucking hypocrite. He's a pig. I hope Santa Claus gets me one of these for Christmas. Oh, wait, I didn't tell you the best part. He loves the environment. Oh, wait, I still didn't tell you the best part. He's got an Irish brogue. No, 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 wait, wait. I still didn't tell you the best part. He's not imaginary. Oh, honey, that's great. But the very best thing is that he listens to you because nothing means more than for a man to... How did the pig tracks get on the ceiling? Spider pig, spider pig. Does whatever a spider pig does. Can he swing from a web? No, he can't. He's a pig. Look out, he is a spider pig. Were you best friends with all of them, too? Spider pig, spider pig. Does whatever a spider pig does. Can he swing from a web? No, he can't. 